Hey everybody and welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today. I'm Matt from Thundorn Games and today we are going to create some hair for a male using ZBrush. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everybody for subscribing and hitting the notification icon. That helps me out and just proves how awesome you are. And an even bigger thank you to my patrons and members. Your names are going to be running across the bottom of the screen as we speak. If you are interested in supporting the channel, feel free to visit the Patreon link in the description below. Or you can simply become a member of this channel by hitting the join button next to the subscribe button. So let's jump into this then. As you can see, I've got Genesis 8 male in my scene. I have removed his eyelashes and I've increased his sub D level to three. And that's just so that I get higher resolution mesh going across into ZBrush. You can just do that in ZBrush. It makes no difference really. So we're gonna hit the go Z button here and ZBrush will load once we've hit accept on that prompt. And now that we're in ZBrush, we're going to select our Genesis 8 Mail tool and drag it out and jump into edit mode. And what we can do is we can actually hit this icon in the top right hand corner. I sort of skipped this in the last couple of videos. So this is a cool one with the bloke's face. You can click on that and then it will automatically point your model in the direction you want to go. Then you just have to hit frame up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the move button here to drag him down a bit. And I'm going to press control shift and I'm just going to isolate the head and then same as previous videos we're going to go into geometry on the right hand side and in modify topology we're just going to say delete hidden and then that just removes all of the unnecessary parts of the body that we don't want and rather than messing around creating a skull cap for this character I'm just going to leave the head intact and that's going to allow us the freedom to see what we're doing and also create a hairstyle that may be different on both sides of the head which is obviously v awesome so i'm gonna make my brush slightly smaller because that's a little bit excessive and i'm gonna drop that down to that's a bit better probably in a region of about 10 10 will work for me perfect and then we're going to just take off the z add and using the control key we can click and we can start masking out our head. Now, if you're unhappy with the resolution of the mesh, you can subdivide it by pressing Control D or hitting the divide button there. I'm actually pretty happy with the resolution of this as it stands. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is for now. And I'm just gonna mask out an area around the sides and back of the head, not the top. So there we go. I'm going to come around, remembering to use my frame up if it gets too far away from center of the screen like this. And I'm deliberately kind of being a little bit sloppy with this because nobody's hair is absolutely perfect. Um, as long as I get it fairly symmetrical, perfection is not what we're after here. And come around like this and mask out this area and obviously I'm not doing the sideburns just yet just make sure that i haven't accidentally see i've accidentally masked a bit of that ear so we're going to drop our brush size down press control and alt and then just drag over that to unmask it and i've done the same thing on the top of that ear as you can see there so that's that done then we're going to hit our frame up again and we're going to drag our guy so that his face is in profile and lo and behold, when we click on the frame up button, that is the pose that our head is in. So I'm now going to really sloppily just mask out a bit of a shape on the side of the head here. And then I'm going to drop my draw size down even more to like four. And then I can just hit control and out to unmask an area. So it comes up like this and then the top of the head is going to be like that so all we're doing really is masking off an area kind of like that and then on the other side we can mask in an area by pressing control making sure that we haven't been sloppy and gone over the ear where we don't want to and because we've got z add turned off the beauty is that if we accidentally click it's not going to do anything 
we're not going to alter our model in any way and again just going to create that shape on the side of the head and then if we come to front view we can kind of see we've gone a little bit awry so let's just tighten that up by going about there and then let's just mask a bit there so we can see roughly where we are and then come back around into side view a little bit finicky and we can just sort of even it up it's almost as if like we're cutting our own hair this is essentially what we're doing there we go cool so we've got this section sorted and what i'm going to do is i'm going to press ctrl w to turn that into a poly group and the reason I'm going to do that is because we want to be able to groom the two hair areas separately. So if we turn on polyfill now, we can see that that poly group is created, which is fine. Now what we want to do is I'm going to turn that off for a moment just so that we can frame up and just want to get an idea of where the top of the where the front of the forehead is. So I'm going to say that the forehead should end about there. And I'm just going to drag across like that. There we go. And now we can see our hairline on where we need to, to fill in. So I'm just going to use frame up there and I'm just going to select this area. And you can overlap a little bit if you assign them just to a separate poly group. It's not going to be the end of the world. Um, just keep it reasonably tidy go around the edges like that don't forget to use your frame up button or press the F button if you stray too far off from the area they're working but what is most important is to make sure that you are actually overlapping them enough that there's a full mask because otherwise what happens is when you create your fiber it's going to be there's going to be a gap there and it's going to look really weird because hair doesn't naturally have gaps in it unless you're suffering from pattern baldness so i've got those nicely overlapped and i'm going to increase my draw size just a smidge to back probably back to about seven just to give me a bit more of a surface to play with and then we're going to just go around being careful not to overlap too much with the stuff that we've already done in case we end up accidentally bleeding over and select all of that there we go so now we've got that selected we're going to just check because there's a little bit unmasked there and it's a little bit faded there and there's a little bit there you want it to be all 100 percent masked so we're going to use our magic head frame up and we're going to press ctrl w again now we should have two poly groups albeit very similarly colored ones but nonetheless what we're going to do now is control shift and click on that poly group and we're going to hold down control and we're going to mask it in and you could make a bigger brush if you wanted to it's not going to be the end of the world just color that all in make sure you've got it all masked there's probably a control a or something like that to select all but i just i do things the way i do them you do things the way you want to do them there we go so we've got it all selected perfect and now what we're going to do is we're going to close down the geometry tab and we're going to go to our fiber mesh which is there and we're going to hit preview and we've got hippie hair going on there it's too long what i'm going to do is go into my modifiers and we're going to change the length down and we're going to drop it right down so it's like 10 so it's like stubble basically really really thin hair and i'm actually going to leave the max fibers at about maybe i'll drag it up to about 60 there we go and then the coverage i'm going to take that up to about 50 we want this to be thick hair we, you know it's stubble but it's still thick stubble you know and that pretty much is what i'm after there so i'm going to hit accept and i'm going to say no to fast preview mode and now we can see that we've got our fine stubbly hair 
round there like that. So now that we've got that, we can uh, frame up just so that we can get a kind of idea of how that looks. And I'm pretty happy with that. So if we turn on our poly groups again, we're going to control and shift and click on that poly group now. And luckily for us, the old hair that we had still uh, still exists. So if we were to hold down control, we can just mask off that poly group like so. And again, just making sure that we've got the whole thing selected like that. Perfect. And now what we're going to do again is we're going to go to our fiber mesh button again. And we're going to hit preview. And this time, obviously, we want something slightly longer. So we're going to change our length to somewhere in the region of probably not far off what it was before. Maybe like, yeah, I'm thinking a bit longer than that. I think we're going to go for a side cut parting kind of comb over. So let's just go with like 150 and see what that gets us. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm happy with that. That works for me. And I'm going to just go to accept and I'm going to say no to fast preview mode again. So there we go. We've got our two, our two hairstyles there. There we go. So when we select the top one and if we hold down control shift and click outside of the area that re restores the visibility of our head so that we can still see what's going on, which is super. Now, this looks weird. I'm not going to lie. It looks kind of wacky. And that's because it hasn't been styled yet. And it's just gone like kind of mad. So what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do is select the top so that we've got that selected. And we're going to press down B and S. And we're going to get our snake hook brush like that. And now in the top, we're going to select brush and we're going to drag that down to the side there so that we can see it. And in fiber mesh, we're going to turn preserve length up to 100%. And we're going to drop down the collision variations and stuff. And we're going to make our brush a little bit longer. And now we're going to comb our hair. All right, so I'm pretty happy with the way that that hair looks now. So what I'm going to do so that I can just have these two sub tools selected. There we go. So we've got our two visible sub tools there. And then in our sub tool option, we have the option to merge and we can merge visible. So if we do that, it will now create another sub tool. Now that we've merged those together, we've got the option here to look at that on its own which we've got and all we need to do now is export that as an obj so that's what we're going to do at the very top we've got export that's what we're going to do and we're going to just call this male hair as soon as we can spell it correctly and we're going to remember to save it in a folder that is appropriate for whatever we're doing and that's now exported so we can jump back to DAS Studio. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to import that from wherever we saved it to. And we're just going to hit accept in the prompt and lo and behold our hairstyle has been imported. Now what we want to do is the first the two things. We're going to select our male hair object and we're going to change the hair color to a hair color that suits us. So you can go with full on black if you want to. Um, it'll kind of work. And bear in mind, I'm not a hairstylist, but all things considered, that is not too terrible of a job. You know, you could, I could have been a little bit more careful around certain areas to prevent it from poking through the skull. But if we now go to our transfer tool, 
and we select Genesis 8 male for the left and we select our hair for the right and in the projection template we just go to hair short hair and we hit accept that will do a little bit of thinking and it's now fitted to our character and we can go into our Nvidia iRay preview mode and you can see that the shade is not very good because it's got a lot of glossiness so we could in theory in fact we could fix that now we can just go to our glossy layered weight and drop that down way down to let's just drop it to zero there we go and now we've got a nice simple male hairstyle that we created ourselves we own it it's entirely ours and we can do whatever the heck we want with it thanks very much for watching this video guys it does mean a lot to me let me know what you think in the comments below and i will see you in the next one take care of yourselves bye bye <laughs>